Theater 5, show number 39, The Evil That Men Do. The opening teaser runs 26 seconds, ends with theme up to conclusion. A two-second pause here for the first commercial. The first act runs 10 minutes, 15 seconds, ends with a cue, a dead duck, followed by a music curtain. A two-second pause here for commercials two and three. The second act runs 8 minutes, 28 seconds, ends with a cue, City Full of Angels, followed by a music curtain. A two-second pause here for commercial number four. The closing follows and contains full credits. The show feed will begin five seconds from now. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I have an important announcement to make about a wonderful new discovery. You'll never get away with it, see? Unless you stop your work, you're marked for murder. They're all against me. But you've got to listen. You've got to listen to me. Theater 5 presents The Evil That Men Do. Yes, Mr. Mayor and members of the Yorkport City Council. The evil that men do lives after them in the form of ever higher taxes and human misery. Forty percent of last year's budget was spent on law enforcement and social agencies for the prevention and control of crime. Unnecessary. I tell you that I can wipe out crime tomorrow. That's ridiculous. Mr. Mayor, why waste the council? Mr. Mayor, time? Mr. Mayor, let me defend myself. Gentlemen, listen to me, please. Go ahead, Doctor, but make it fast. All right. Five years ago, I started experimenting in my laboratory at the university with a new group of tranquilizers. One in particular seemed promising. I called it Benefactral. After the usual laboratory and animal tests, I performed some carefully controlled experiments at Wilson Youth House and also at the Chester Street Jail. The results were remarkable. Benefactral immediately controlled and destroyed every antisocial impulse, every tendency towards crime for a period of 48 hours. It happens before your very eyes. I don't believe it. Don't Gentlemen, know. it's true. Crime could be wiped out completely by adding benefactral in minute quantities to the city water supply. Anyone who drinks a cup of coffee, a plate of soup, or a lemonade, any liquid containing city water will instantly be free of criminal tendencies for two whole days. Oh, You'll I have to prove it, Doctor. I will accept that challenge. God, bring in the prisoner. Now, Mr. Mayor, the man who's being brought in is a, an inmate of Chester Street Jail. He's had five arrests, four convictions, all crimes of violence. He's hostile, oh, oh, calcitrant, utterly antisocial. You dirty, put the hands over your lousy pink. You can't force me in there. Get... Teddy. I'm going to get you for this. You'll see. Hello, George. I'm uh, Dr. Alexander Kieran. So what? I won't keep you here long. All I want you to do is uh, drink one glass of water. What's in it? Nothing that will hurt you. Five bucks and you got yourself a deal. All right, five bucks. Here. Now, uh, drink the water. It tastes okay. That's good. Uh, anything else I can do for you, Doc? No, that's all. Uh, here, Doc, take your five dollars back. I didn't really earn it. No, it's yours. I don't know. I, I feel funny taking it. It'd be stealing. That's not right. All right, guard, you can loosen that handcuff. Oh, thanks. And, sir, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I caused you any trouble before. Oh, uh, you better take your watch back. I'm ashamed to say I, uh, I snatched it from you as you brought me in. <laughs> Here, I apologize. <laughs> Alex? Nancy. Oh, darling. Oh, Nancy, that was wonderful news. Oh, darling, I'm so happy for you. The demonstration went well. It couldn't have gone better. The mayor and council backed me all the way. Oh. I have complete authorization to treat all city water with benefactual and enough funds for a one-year tryout to build a pilot plant to manufacture it. For just one year? Well, Nancy, that's all I need. 
If I can keep Yorkport free of crime for one year with Manufactural, you will witness the, the beginning of a moral revolution which will sweep the world. <laughs> well, if I'm alive to witness it. Alive. Well, don't you see, Alex, that you're upsetting the balance of nature just as other scientists did when they, they killed off so many insects that the birds died? Well, honey, I, I, I thought you believed in Benefactual. I, I thought you'd be proud and happy that it was being recognized. Well, I'm proud of you, Alex, and I'm happy for you, but I... Look, I've always thought that people could only better themselves by dedication, not medication. I, I hope I'm wrong, dear. With all my heart, Alex, I hope I'm wrong. But I, I'll get it, dear. You must be tired. Where's that four-eyed squirt who's making trouble for me? Who are you? And what's the meaning of that gun? My name is John Corriff, and the gun means business, lady. Out of my way. I want to talk to your husband. Put your gun away, and I'll let you talk to him. What's the matter? You ain't never heard of me? I've heard of big John Corriff, but I'm not afraid of you, and neither is my husband. Now put your gun away and come in. Okay. Okay. That's all I wanted. Alex? Uh, this is John Corriff. Corriff? Cora? Uh, Big John, the gangster. Hey, I don't like the way you said that, lady. Uh, the newspapers generally call me the head of the Yorkport Crime Syndicate, which is more classy, and which is why I am here, Doc. Anything that isn't strictly legit in this town, I get a cut of it. And I expect to continue, Dr. Kieran, without you butting into it. Oh, I haven't done anything to you, Mr. Cora. And you ain't gonna. But you take my boys and make them go straight with that dope of yours, and I won't have any rackets left and nobody to run them. Oh, I see. You know, I, I didn't realize that I'd be hurting anybody, but I'm uh, perfectly willing to hear your point of view. Nancy, fix us a drink, would you please? Of course, You'll dear. join me, won't you? Okay, Doc. Uh, scotch and water. The uh, special scotch for Mr. Koroff, dear. Well, thanks. You're a right guy, Doc. Well, I take that as a compliment. But that don't mean I'm going to go easy on you. Some of my best friends, they get taken care of. You know what I mean. And this idea of yours, Doc, just ain't gonna go through. Well, the city council has given me I know, off. I know, I know. But I'll give you 50 grand to forget the formula. And a bullet in your back if you don't. Oh, thanks for the drink, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Thanks, dear. Well, here's mud in your eye. Hey, <laughs> That's good scotch. Now, look, Doc, you think about what I said. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, 50,000? Make it a hundred. Uh, wait a minute, I can't do that. That's bribery. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking of. Not to speak of the bullet. That, that's murder. Yes, yeah, so I've heard. You know, Alex, when you really think about it, crime don't pay. A lot of heartache, that's all. You really feel that way, John? One hundred percent. You know, Alex, I think I'm going to resign from the mafia. I find myself in fundamental disagreement with its purposes and policies. <laughs> oh, Nancy, listen to this. Hmm? Despite delays and difficulties in getting Dr. Kieran's water treatment plant into operation, the crime rate in Yorkport has dropped drastically due to the disorganization of the crime syndicate formerly headed by Big John Cora. <laughs> you know, the name still frightens me. When I opened the door and saw that guy... Oh, that's over, dear. Now he's my friend and biggest supporter. Well, I hope he stays friendly. Don't worry, I'll see to it that he does. Every 48 hours, I give him a dose of Benefactual. He knows that he needs it. Well, suppose he were sick and couldn't come or, or just out of the city. Alex, you're leaning on such a slender reed. Oh, now, Nancy, don't start that again, please. Look, to everybody but my wife, I'm a hero. Oh, Alex. But it's true. There's a delegation coming to see me in a few minutes just to congratulate me. Chief of Police Roberts and Jim Rutgers, some big businessman. Just to congratulate you? Well, I suppose so. They didn't say, but... You know. Oh, well, that must be them. Will you show them in there? Mm, certainly. Oh, How do you do? Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, Chief Roberts. Good afternoon, Mr. Rutgers. Have a seat. <laughs> well, Chief Roberts, I, I guess I'm making your work a lot easier these days. Huh? You're uh, making my work easier, but my life harder. I, I beg your pardon? Doctor, I'm John Rutgers, president of the Rutgers Lock Company. You know, the trouble with you scientists is that you don't think things through. 
I'm afraid I don't understand what... I'll level with you, Doctor. We represent hundreds of people. You may not know it, but you're trying to ruin us, and we're not going to let you. Ruin you? I think very highly of you. My lock company employs a lot of people here in Yorkport. If you put us out of business, you'll upset the economy. I've spent 25 years in police work. I'm a highly trained man, but trained only for crime detection. I'm a dedicated servant of the community. I won't take this lying down. Now, we're not talking just for ourselves. And we warn you that we're not going to stand for this. Oh, now, wait a minute. Are you, are you threatening you me? Take it any way you like. But if you don't listen to us, some of the boys from Big John's old organization may call on you. Oh, look, I'm not going to be blackmailed. I'll take this to the public. I'll take my case to the citizens through the newspapers. You're being naive, Karen. The newspapers need stories about robberies, assaults, and crimes of passion. If they helped you eliminate crime completely, they'd be cutting their own throats. And, uh, that's a crime. You trying to tell me that the newspapers, that, that responsible citizens want crime? It's not as simple as that, Kieran. You're upsetting the balance of nature. Oh, yes, I've heard that before. We're not threatening you, but... But if you don't stop, somebody, I don't know who, but somebody is going to make you a dead duck. Alex, please give it up. Don't try to reform the world. It isn't ready. Nancy, I can't surrender. You've got to. Now, don't you see, five minutes after you came home from the council meeting, the mayor and his political henchmen sent their first emissary. Uh, I, I don't follow you. Well, then you I... must be blind, Alex. Now, how else would Big John Corf know about a secret meeting of the city council so soon? Oh, Alex, darling, please give up the whole benefactoral project. Nancy, I can't and I won't. Well... Then you'll need help from someone who understands the use of, of force. Now, when will John Corf report here again? Well, he should be here this afternoon. His 48-hour dosage period ends tonight. Well, when he comes. Now, darling, speak to him. He's your friend and a lie. He's got to help you. Because you need help. <laughs> Oh, good afternoon, John. I, I was wondering if you'd forgotten. I got to apologize for being late, Alex, but you see, I'm taking this here course in flower arranging at the Y. Oh, I wish my problems were made of flowers. Hey, what's bugging you, Alex? Look, John, a delegation visited me representing everyone in Yorkport who makes a living out of crime. My old gang? Well, they're in on it, but the leaders are the chief of police and Rutgers, the lock manufacturer. And they say that they have the backing of everyone who has a financial stake in the commission, prevention, or the fear of crime. They demand that I forget all about the benefactoral project, or... or else. Or else what? They threaten me with murder. <gasps> murder? That's not nice. Not nice at all. John, I need your help. I don't know how to deal with this, but you, you, you've you lived in a world of force and Please violence. Please don't and... remind me. I need that kind of experience to deal with the threats to my life. Well, not so fast, my dear friend. That murder, like I said, that's a bad thing. But isn't it much worse if we take the law into our own hands? I'm not taking the law into my own hands. I'm just asking you to help protect me from this conspiracy. Well, I don't see how I could. Naturally, I threw away my rods, you know, my guns... Because I didn't have no license. I couldn't even protect myself from a fly bite. But I keep thinking, if only we could make all those guys, a police chief and all, as nice as me, they wouldn't think of bumping you off. J John! What? That's it? I should have thought of it before. Look, we're not going to wait for the water treatment plant to be finished. Tonight, you and I are going to take some barrels of Benefactoral and dump them in the city reservoir. But it's against the law to dump things in the water. I think your plan is illegal. No, 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 John, it isn't. We'll just be doing it earlier than planned. It's perfectly legal. Look, will you, will you help me? Well, if you put it that way, sure, why not? I'd be glad to. Great. 
Now, here's what I want you to do. You go right away and hire a truck. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, don't tell anyone what you need it for. Uh-huh. Then, at 11 o'clock tonight, you come here. Okay. We load the truck, take it to the reservoir, and by tomorrow, there won't be anyone in town who'll have the slightest impulse to commit any crime of violence against me. Doc, that's a great idea. I'd better get going. Yeah, the faster the better. But remember, John, don't raise anyone's suspicions. Stay out of sight until 11. 11 on the button. I'll be seeing you. I'll be here. Thanks. So long. Nancy! Nancy, come here quick, dear. What is it? What is it, Alex? Everything's all fixed. There isn't going to be any trouble. Oh, wonderful. By tomorrow, the danger will be totally gone. By tomorrow? How come by tomorrow? Well, tonight, we're treating the water in the reservoir with benefactual. We? You mean you and me? I, well, I'd like to help no, no, you, no, but... No, no, I... no. John Corriff and me. John promised he'd be here at 11 tonight. Oh. You, you mean you spoke to him when he came in for his dose of benefactual? Benefactual? And... Ben... Nancy. He forgot it. He what? Oh, we were talking about the threat to my life, and he forgot it. We both forgot it. And how long will his present dose be effective? Oh, I don't know, till six o'clock, seven at the latest. Oh, I... Alex, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, darling, I don't know where he can be. I've called everywhere. Oh, I think he'll be here. Oh, maybe, but in what condition? Oh, I... oh, now we'll see. Now, Alex, be careful. Hi, Doc. Well, here I am, just like I said. Oh, John, we were worried about you. You forgot to get your dose of benefactual. <laughs> yes, Alex and I were afraid that you might have changed back to the way you were. Never gave it a thought. Yeah. Well, you'd uh, better have some benefactual before we forget. Ah, oh, Doc, I, I don't need it. I think I'm changed permanent. Well, take it anyway, John, just to be sure. I tell you, Doc, I don't need it. Now, come on now, we got things to do. I got the truck out in the laboratory. We'll pile the stuff on and get out to the reservoir. (laughs) And Nancy, you see, there was nothing to worry about. Come on, let's go, John. Uh, A couple of hundred yards further, John, then turn right. I get it. Say, Doc, how long will this load of stuff... uh... You know, the benefactor old uh, keep you up for doped up. Doped up? Well, you know what I mean. Fixed. So that nobody will do anything violent. Oh, about four months, I figure, if they keep on drinking this water. And that gives us a chance to get the regular treatment system in operation. This gives us a bigger chance than that, Alex. Well, what's bigger than that? Now, listen to me. All my life, I wanted to have a city just laid out for me. A model city. Model for crime, that is. Not thanks to you, I got it. John, I don't understand you. I'll spell it out. All you and me have to do is stay away from that water. Then everybody else reforms. And we pick all the meat off the bones and blow the town. John. Look, you're not thinking of committing a crime. Why, I thought... That I'd gone straight permanent... That you were still playing me for a patsy? Forget it. Nobody does that to Big John. Not for long. But you go along with me, Doc. And I'll cut you in for a piece of the take. And uh, if I refuse? Refuse? It wouldn't make no sense. I got all the benefactual I need right here in the truck. And I also got a gun. A brand new gun. So, here we are, Doc Kieran. Just you and me. The beginning of a great partnership or the end of the road. You choose. No. I won't let my work be perverted. You'll have to shoot me. Doc, it wouldn't be the first time I've had to knock off a friend. Okay. Out and walk. All right, Corriff. This is Chief Roberts. Drop the gun. We have you covered on all sides. You heard the chief, John. You better drop the gun. All right. I'll shoot. Okay, boys. Move in and grab him. Mrs. Karen, you can come out now. Nancy. Oh, darling, you're all right. Oh, darling, I had to call the police. Oh, well, you mean you... You knew that Corriff was faking tonight? Well, I didn't know, dear, but not for sure. But I I know that when you try to interfere with the evil that men do, you're looking for trouble. 
And I wouldn't trade my husband for a, a city full of angels. <laughs> Theater 5 has presented The Evil That Men Do, written by Raphael David Blau and directed by Harry Nelson. In the cast, Ian Martin, Jan Miner, Jackson Beck, Court Benson, and George Petrie. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlas Dotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.